Okay, my name is Sebastián Osorio. I come from Colombia, but I'm currently living in Mexico. Uh, I work as a software engineer in SkyCatch, uh, and, and I'm also one of the organizers of the GDLs of the JavaScript community in Guadalajara. Uh, where in the previous uh, meetup, we have like more than 120 attendees, which is really awesome for a local community. Uh, also, I like to take some pictures, uh, and, I, and I like to travel. So uh, this is a picture that I took in Hong Kong some uh, months ago. And if suddenly I uh, upload those uh, pictures to my Instagram, so you can follow me. And also, uh, I, I tweet a little bit, so you can also follow me. But uh, do, do you know this movie? Uh, this is one of my favorite movies uh, of the last years. Uh, it's made by the Comics Wave Films, which is one studio we, that is great uh, making you feel in the city uh, where the stories are placed. Uh, and this movie is about, is about three stories uh, that make you feel in China. And today, I, I want to present three stories to make you feel uh, more uh, related uh, with what I want to talk about. So this is leveling your server si serverless application design using hexagonal architecture by Sirgayeto Studios. The first one is about SkyCatch. And this is the SkyCatch platform of today. Uh, we are not a drone company. Uh, we are working more with data and software. And what we can do with that data and our software is awesome. Uh, this is a real site model. Uh, this, this is the 3D render. And what we do is to take some photos with our drone uh, and create this 2D to 3D. Uh, where we can analyze our site and what, what is the uh, advance of our construction. But some time ago, uh, this platform of today was smaller, was different. Uh, and let's, let's see this guy. This guy is using SkyCatch. And this guy is connecting the, their computer to the cloud, and the cloud is doing all the stuff, and all, all, all that SkyCatch do. Uh, He's so happy using the platform. He's saving uh, time using our technology because, yes, they, they save a lot of time uh, using SkyCatch to analyze their site instead of doing that manually. But what happens if they don't have internet connection? We are not in the perfect world. Uh, they work in construction sites, and they don't have internet connection. Or if, or if they don't have internet connection, uh, it is low, and we need to upload really big data sets uh, to the cloud. Um, and yes, for our customer, it was a pain to consume the services. That's why we created the H1. And the H1 is interesting because the first and the most important thing is to get the cloud into the site. And we started to use this IoT device that changed the situation. And also, uh, we launched it. Uh, it works uh, with and without network connection. It also creates map and maps and point clouds, point clouds in three minutes. And also, you can run our AI models. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, it helps us to improve the precision uh, of the maps in less than five centimeters. Now, this guy is happier, have more precision, and makes in this decision, make SkyCatch the fastest in the market from taking the photos and put it in the hands of the users. And yeah, that was the first story. But now about Fury. Fury was a side project in the previous company I used to work. And we love side projects because you can learn, you can practice, and you can add value. In that company, uh, we had the perk of all the food we can eat, the breakfast, lunch, etc. Uh, and that responsibility gave us uh, a lot of food waste in the company. And I, I wanted to change this. So we created Foodie, and we started with an API, which is, was a REST API that then evolved to GraphQL. And then we put this in a Docker, uh, because we wanted to put this in a server and share with our devs the environment. And this was amazing, because I didn't have experience using Apollo or Docker on GraphQL and evolving from REST to GraphQL. And it's interesting, because we gained some visibility in the company. And also, we got a commitment. Uh, they wanted to have our platform uh, for one exact date. And we also got a budget to maintain some servers. 
And it was a company for 100 people or 300 people in the next year. And I thought, yeah, this is fine. And we are going to use the humble server or the smaller server in the market and put our platform there. But we started to have some problems managing the stages, managing the release process. We didn't have experience using this. Also, we started to overuse the humble budget, which wasn't that humble, and, and it's horrible. You are spending more money than the money that is coming to your startup or to your project, and we still have the commitment. We, we needed to change this. And thinking about it, we was, I know, in the same position of different startups, uh, thinking of some users, uh, or our users use a certain uh, period of time our uh, platform, but we are paying for servers 24-7. And we also didn't have time or resources to maintain our, our server, our, our environment. So Lambda came to us. And we have a free tier, so it was kind of free. And even if it wasn't free, we are, we are, we are only charged for the time we are uh, using uh, the lambdas, and also it was easy to manage because you start with the serverless platform that probably you already know uh, on the tool, and you only need to install serverless, do serverless login, uh, then serverless, and you have already one serverless YAML with the configuration of your service, your provider, your function, and it's kind of free, or kind of easy, or by free, yeah. And the function there, uh, it's pretty uh, straightforward. You have one function that receives one event, and you have one status code, and you return the body you want to return. So it is easy. But change in your environment is equal to refactor time. And we didn't have time to refactor. Uh, and you know, re refactor always means that something is gonna be broken. And that, that's complex for, for your project that needs to go to the market. But we were lucky, we were using Apollo server. Uh, and we were able to switch because this technology. This is uh, the express uh, declaration of your Apollo server. Uh, you have the type definitions, you have the resolvers, and you create one instance of the Apollo server. Then you add that instance over uh, express, and voila, you have your Apollo server. And for Lambda, I, I found this example, uh, which is pretty similar. Uh, type definitions, resolvers, uh, you have what, your server, uh, and you only export the handler uh, that the Lambda function is gonna consume. And th these, those are small line, lines of code. Uh, and we finished migrating in less than a week, and we were able to continue the development, and we, uh, and now Fudi is doing uh, an impact, reducing the, the food waste in the company. But remember, the, we were lucky. We didn't plan this. Uh, just a good movement. This is the end of the story. And now about a Startup X. And this is based on a real story. A startup X was a local startup uh, that have a global competitor. But the difference was that they needed to be the first in the city uh, to provide this service. They needed velocity. They, they used, and they used, uh, a service that increased the development velocity. And they did it, they were the first uh, in the market and it, it made a, a, a real difference. But do you know what was this awesome and magic platform? Yes, we, we, we don't like to talk about this too much. And we know what happened. Uh, they did it, uh, but for a local startup with no money or resources, it's really hard to migrate uh, from a platform that is dying, uh, and it's even worse if you are highly coupled uh, to, die, to that platform. Uh, and yes, uh, this is the end of the last story. Uh, no one died, just the platform and the startup, uh, but no one died. Uh, and this is real. Um, learn time, yes. And you have been here 10 minutes for uh, telling us three stories and what, what do you want? I want the contrast from a, a company that is doing things fast, or a company that is lucky and is in the market, and a company that wasn't able to do things fast. Things fast. And the main learn, and it's a fact in software, is that your application will always change. 
uh, you need velocity, you need to innovate, uh, you need to give value to your users, and that's why your code will change and your environment will change. You always want uh, um, the new stuff in your application for giving more and uh, more and more value. So it's time for a new project. It's a new story. Uh, and, and I found this tweet when, while I was working on the presentation, and I feel really in, uh, in, in this tweet because, yes, I, I wasn't able to understand what was making the difference uh, in, my, in my projects, and I need to learn. I, I want success on my project. I don't want to work in a project that is going to die. Uh, and now I, I would like to uh, understand what I can do better. We started a new project, and the hard requirement, I don't know why, you know, is to use serverless. Uh, it was a POC inside the organization, uh, and the application used to change every week. And it was a chaos. Uh, but as well as a chaos, uh, we had a lot of services. I, I don't need to talk about serverless. Uh, because I'm not the first one talking about serverless. And you can experiment with new technology and add uh, new stuff and new functionality to your application. But with a great power, uh, you have great responsibilities. Uh, thanks, Uncle Ben. And what, what do we really want from my, uh, from my new development? I, I want success, yes, but I want to isolate what, what is more important. I, I have the responsibility with the company, and it's to preserve, to preserve the, biz, the business logic. Uh, I, I wanted elasticity uh, in, a, in my platform so we can grow fast and, and also we can experiment more. And you know, you are not the first one. Uh, I'm not the first one here. Uh, and there are like different proposals that center the attention into the business co in the business uh, logic of your application. Uh, but the hexagonal architecture uh, has been more popular and mentioned, and you can find more information about it. Your application has two parts: the inside and the outside. You have nothing else. Uh, the inside is something where your business code is in, uh, and the outside is any service that can be interacting to uh, your application. So your insight is equally executed by your test, uh, your clients, uh, I don't know, it can be executed in your IoT device. Also, if you use Node.js, it's because you want to run in different places. Um, and once you have this, and you have the interactions you want, you need to transform and you need to communicate uh, the external world with the internal world. And you have to make some transformations in between there. Those transformations are made by ports and adapters. And we, we already know those ports and those adapters. Uh, one port is an endpoint to the real world, and we use ports uh, every day uh, but if you are traveling, you can notice that those ports are different in, in, along the world. Uh, but our devices are not limited to use the port of your city. Uh, we don't need to change our cable or we don't need to change our device. Uh, we need to adapt us uh, to, the new, to the new port. Um, and that's why it's called port and adapters architecture. And while I was talking with my, friend, with my friends about hexagonal, they always told me, but why is hexagonal? Uh, it's hexagonal because it's easy to understand the abstraction, and it's open to connect always new ports and adapters. For example, for SkyCatch, uh, it's easy to put uh, the business logic in the center, and this business logic can be executed in the cloud or in an IoT device, and add one port for communicate with, with a web service, at one port for testing, at another port for the database, and another one for the file system. If you change your platform, you can change the port of the database or the port of the file system and adapt to the new platform. And here we can see four ports, which is more like one square. And in 40, 
uh, we can have one port the, uh, for the GraphQL, which is the one consumed by your clients, the port for the test, and the port for the date database. And in serverless, this uh, look like this. Uh, you have events, you have different services that can be repressible along uh, the serverless platforms. Uh, you can have one Lambda event adapter or a local trigger adapter going uh, in, the, in one port, or also you can change between ports uh, of, I don't know, the SNS service, the simple notification service, or a local notification adapter. And your database can use MongoDB in serverless uh, sorry, uh, DynamoDB in serverless, uh, but also in your local can use MongoDB and in a memory adapter. Most of our serverless applications start with a service trigger. And I, I'm gonna be focused on AWS. Uh, you have a service trigger uh, by your, I don't know, API gateway, or you can have one trigger from your DynamoDB when one event, when one, uh, one record is added to your database, and also you can have another service trigger when you upload one file to S3. Um, and we create uh, the ports. Uh, we have one payload. This is one example of the payload uh, from the API gateway. And you have the path, you have the headers, the path parameters, the request context, and the HTTP method. But that information is gonna be different in the S3 port or it's gonna be different from your state functions even port. And of course it's gonna be different if you are using one solution in house. And you have your core. Your core just receives a payload, uh, the easiest contract or whatever you defined. So in the previous one, we, def we have one event uh, and we now in the core, we have this event filtered with the information that your core is gonna, be, is gonna use. And the outside port, because we need to communicate as to different services, uh, is whatever you want. Could be a function, uh, or could be a class, or whatever, but what is important here is that we need to define the interface pretty well between the core and the outside port, because if we change the outside port, uh, we need to continue uh, being connected to our core uh, with the same contract. It's important uh, to don't change the core if your outside port uh, changes. And in, in, in the response way, you have your outside port returning one, one response, uh, your core processes it, and your core gives a response to your different ports or your different service, and, and this is returned to your different service triggers. What we can see, in the center, in the core, is that this core logic is available with a simple contract, simple parameters that you can, uh, you can define easily and consume easily. Uh, those can be small classes or small functions. And also, we can concentrate the team effort uh, on creating what is important uh, for your business, the tests that are important for your business. Uh, those tests that only will change if, if your business change. And also, uh, it calls outside uh, the world using one interface as port. Uh, but make sure that you manage uh, the errors because your port need, uh, needs to respond to the outside world with the correct uh, error management. And from the port, uh, you have a single piece of code that handles the definition of any event or any service you are using uh, that your business logic can run. And also, you can test uh, what concerns to the definition of the service. Uh, for both parts, you can do unit testing to check that your code is running well. Uh, and for integration testings, uh, the core doesn't need too much information about the outside world, so you can mock whatever is in. Uh, and the port is the place where you can do integration testing with real data. Uh, and those concepts uh, can be really abstract, and you can play with them. Uh, this is one tool that we created with one uh, collaborator or one team a teammate in my previous project. And I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it well, uh, but we were playing uh, with how to export ports. 
and we created something cre uh, called Lambda Factory. And Lambda Factory uh, was one tool that created kind of uh, a middleware, and you can pass uh, down uh, the different events that you can have, uh, the different ports that you have uh, configured. Uh, and you can reuse and reuse more code here. So we ended up uh, with rules easy to understand for your team and easy to apply uh, with these small concepts. Also, we ended up with portable code and with tested code. Uh, and something that I noticed, it was when we started the, the project, we started talking about we need to migrate uh, our services or our logic uh, to a new uh, interaction. Uh, but while we started to use uh, the hexagonal architecture, we stopped talking about refactor. We started to talk about adaptation, which means change the environment of where your application is running, which, in my opinion, is a mon uh, mental model that I prefer. Um, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.